Hello, I'm Tom Gustafson, Computer Information Systems Instructor at Lake Superior College in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to this fifth and final video on imaging a Windows 7 computer. The computer image is a complete image of a Windows installation, the operating system, drivers, applications, and settings, and we've created one using ImageX and stored it in a .wim file in previous videos. Now we're going to use that image to distribute it to multiple computer systems. We've already generalized the computer before we did the image using the sysprep tool, so we're all ready to send it out to a new computer. We've been using the Windows 7 Enterprise Evaluation and the Windows Automated Installation Kit, both free downloads from Microsoft. The steps to image a computer are listed here and we've already done most of them. We installed and prepared a Windows image with sysprep. We downloaded the automated installation kit, created a Windows PE boot disk. We used ImageX to create that WIM image of the system. We partitioned the destination computer drive with disk part. And now for the last step in the process, distribute the image to other computers. So. We've discussed the sysprep tool and how to generalize a system. We've discussed the automated installation kit. We've looked at how to create a Windows PE boot um, ISO file. We use the ISO file in a virtual machine. We could have burned it to a CD as well, if that's what we wanted to do. And in the last video, we created an image with the ImageX tool, capturing it to a .wim file so that we can take that file and push that image out to other computers. We also used the disk part tool to create two partitions on our destination computer. One is the 100 megabyte NTFS partition that is used as the system disk. It contains the boot files. And the other one will be the operating system disk in Windows terminology called the boot disk. It will contain the operating system. And we're now ready to distribute this image to other computers. Let me just jump back to our virtual machine because in the last video I left it in the imaging process. And now let me show you the virtual machine. The image completed, 100% complete. The D drive was imaged and the elapsed time was 18 minutes and 45 seconds. And recall that I stored the image out on the F drive. Oh, excuse me, I need to plug in the flash drive. I had unplugged it. I had stored the image out on the F drive, which is a, a USB flash drive, so that I can easily plug that flash drive into another computer to push the image out. So there it is, win7.wim, um, 3.6 gigabytes in size. The virtual machine that I'm going to push the image to is right here. And recall that this is the one that I had created all the partitions on. And that one's ready to go. OK, so our system is partitioned and ready to receive the image. And we can. Now push the image out to the system. Let's talk about the steps involved in doing that. We need to distribute this image to uh, another computer. One option would be for us to put the image on a network share. And if we were to do that, we would have to create the shared folder and put the image file on that shared folder. And then from the, the system booted to Windows PE, we would want to run this command. It's the net use command that maps a drive letter. In this case, it says the F drive is going to refer to or point to a shared folder on the server. This is a UNC name, Universal Naming Convention, two backslashes, followed by the name of the server, whatever that is. This could also be an IP address, a backslash, and then the name of the shared folder. And when you create a shared folder, of course, you give it a name. And then you could use your F drive as the location of the Windows image file. Another option is to use a USB storage device, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I have the Windows image file on a flash drive. Well, I'm just going to insert that drive into uh, my virtual machine, and I'm going to make note of the drive letter. And I'll use that drive letter right down here as the source of my image file. 
So when I actually apply the image then, this example right here assumes that F is the drive that has the image, whether it's a shared folder or a USB flash drive, a shared uh, or a, a USB hard drive, whatever the case might be. D is the Windows PE CD, that's the CD that I booted from. And C is the drive that's going to receive the Windows image. Now in your situation, these drive letters may be different, so you have to be flexible and uh, use the correct drive letter. So D colon here is the CD, the Windows PE CD, that has image X stored on it. The, the first argument is slash apply, which means I'm going to apply an image. Tells the image X program to apply an image, not capture one. This is the location of the image file that I want to apply. And in this example, it's f colon myimage.wim, assuming that that flash drive or network share is drive f. The one here is a volume number, and it's a, a volume number within the image itself. A Windows image can actually have multiple installations, multiple volumes on it. Um, ours only has one, and so we put a one here. And that would normally be the case if you have an image with a single volume in it. That's just one operating system image. The C colon here specifies the drive which is going to receive the image. And uh, if it's the C drive, then that's what you want to put right there. So again, you need to be flexible with these uh, drive letters and know which drive letter to put where. So let's jump back to our virtual machine and let's see what drive letters we're using. Whenever you boot Windows PE, it starts out at this X drive, and you may or may not want to use this, this drive letter. In our case, we're not going to use it at all in this example. One thing uh, I want you to take note of here is that we do want to use the flash drive that has the Windows image file on it. And if you look down here, there's a little icon that represents a USB device, but it's dimmed. And right now, my Toshiba flash drive that I want to use is connected to the physical computer, not to the virtual machine. So I got to click on it here and connect it. It'll disconnect it from the host because it can only be connected to the virtual or the physical computer, not to both. Then the image turns dark and flashes a little. Now I have a drive that's ready for me to use. It doesn't tell me what drive letter it is though, so you need to look around and see which drive letters are. So let's do that. I'll do a DIR of C colon. That's my system partition. Remember, that's my 100 megabyte system partition for the boot files on my virtual machine. I'm not going to use that at all in pushing my image out. That's just reserved for boot files. If I do a DIR of D colon, I don't have a D drive, so I'm not going to worry about D. If I do a DIR of E colon, notice that's my CD-ROM. It has my ImageX program, and I definitely want to know where that is because I want to run ImageX, and that's the CD that I booted from. If I do a DIR of F colon, that's where my win7.wim file is. That's my Toshiba flash drive. So E is my CD, F is my flash, F for flash. That's a good thing to remember. Um, what else do I have out here? I need to find my Windows drive, the destination for my image. And sure enough, when I do a DIR of G colon, that's my Windows uh, partition that I formatted. So E is my CD, F is my flash, G is my destination. So now I can uh, run my command. I'll just say e colon backslash imagex.exe because imagex is on the CD. Now I want to do a slash apply. And then I want to state where is the image that I want to push out. It's on my F drive and it's called win7.wim. Upper and lower case don't matter here. Then I specify one. I want to get the first volume off that image. There's only one image on it anyway. And then I state the destination. Where does this image go? And it's going to my G drive, my Windows partition. So again, E, F, and G are the drives I'm using here. But in your situation, you may use different drives. You've got to know where your drives are, what's on them, and how to format this command properly. I'll press Enter, and ImageX starts the imaging process. Uh, it's going to take, oh, 15, 20 minutes to push this image out. And so I will pause the video, and we'll come back and finish it up when it's done. OK, the imaging has completed. We've pushed the image to the drive, and we have one step remaining. This step involves configuring the boot configuration using this command, 
BCD boot. It's in the Windows System 32 directory. Now you can find this a few different places, but I'm going to change this command here to the X drive because I do have the uh, BCD boot program on my CD, my Windows PE boot CD, and so I have a Windows and a System32 directory. In fact, that's the default directory you get when you boot into Windows PE. So I'm, I can run that BCD boot. You'll also have this BCD boot in the Windows System32 of any image that you could create. So what happens when I run this Windows uh, BCD boot command? This is configuring the boot configuration data store. And so this makes my disk bootable and it makes this um, operating system one of the boot options, the operating system stored in the Windows directory that I specify here. And again, you have to get your drive letters right. I'm going to use the X drive here and uh, to use BCD boot off my Windows PE boot CD. And I'm going to specify the Windows directory of my newly applied image on my hard drive. So I'm not going to use D and D in my command. I'm going to use whatever makes sense on my system. So let's jump over to my system and again take a look at my drive letters. Notice when Windows PE boots up we get Windows System 32 and notice if I do a BCD DIR BCD asterisk there's my D BCD boot command right on my Windows PE drive. And remember that the D G drive was my drive that received the Windows image. Let's uh, see if it's still there and it, it's not. Things have changed. So I have to locate that drive that has the Windows image on it. So let's just look through my drive letters one at a time. C is still my 100 megabyte system drive so that's not the one that has the image on, on it. But I'm going to guess that it's here on the D drive because that was an available drive letter and sure enough D has users, Windows, program files. You can see that's a Windows installation. The name of the partition is Windows. That's what I named it when I did my uh, partitioning. So D is the Windows installation that I want to configure here. So here's what I can do. BCD boot. And um, I don't have to specify a drive letter and a path for BCD boot here because it's in my current directory. I'm, my current directory is X Windows System 32. So I could put X Windows System 32 in front of this command, but I don't need to. But what I do need to do is specify the Windows directory of the installation that I want added to my boot configuration. And so I type BCD boot, D colon Windows, and that takes care of that command. Now, um, remember back here on our in our um, example that I showed you, we gave a full path to BCD boot, but that wasn't necessary because I was in the directory of BCD boot already. So knowing the command line, knowing about default directories, knowing about drive letters and what's where, that's really essential when you're using these command line utilities. So I've got my image created. I've configured my boot configuration data store. Now I can reset this virtual machine, and if all goes well, it will boot to Windows. Let's give it a shot. OK, it found a Windows installation on the hard drive. It's starting Windows. And I'm going to pause the video now while this inst or this boot up takes place. It's telling me that setup is preparing the computer for first use, so that's a very good sign that it found a Windows installation and it's running uh, basically some sysprep things to get the computer ready for startup. Okay, I paused the video again for a little bit and now we're uh, starting up Windows, so again things are proceeding normally. I'm going to pause it again just to save a little time on the video. Okay, the system has booted. Um, SysPrep has started with an option to enter the out-of-box experience and uh, reboot if I wish. I will cancel it just so we can see that Windows did get imaged and is up and running just fine here and then we can give it a give it a run and sure enough there it is. 
We've been successful. Thank you for watching this series of video videos on imaging windows.